Uh, guys, thanks for sitting down with us. This is Gordon Mann uh, off camera. And the two gentlemen you're looking at, Giorgio Milligan on your left, and Heike Yochian of the Franklin and Marshall Diplomats, who are ranked in the top 25 and at the top of the Centennial Conference. And as part of our regional coverage here of the 2012 Men's Division Three basketball season, we're sitting down with both of them. Now, Giorgio, you're a senior, correct? Correct. Okay. Tell us a little bit about, uh, take us back to your decision to come to Franklin and Marshall. Tell us about how you found the school and why you decided to come here. Um, actually, it's just a long story. Um, I actually didn't know about Franklin and Marshall until they came to one of my games. Uh, okay. We had a coach that now coaches at Marymount, a head coach, Coach Rogers. He recruited yep. me. And um, me and him really clicked right away. And I had a lot of D2s and low Division One, So sat down with my parents and, you know, if we weren't going to be going to one of those high schools on ESPN every day, might as well, you know, get a great education. And um, Franklin Marshall was top of the list. So I early decisioned and decided to come in. Now, Hike, I think you had a somewhat similar situation. You also looked at some lower level Division Ones, lower level in terms of yes. athletics, not academics. I think Lehigh or Lafayette. So tell us about how you ended up here. Yeah, I was getting recruited by them, but not very intensively. Okay. But then, very similar to Georgia's with Chris Rogers. He came to a bunch of my games, really clicked, and he had me over. He had me sleep in his house one day. And I really liked the school academically, and I talked to my parents. And for them, academics is number one priority. And this just felt like a great place to play basketball starting my freshman year and have fun and play academic and <clears throat> Was it how hard was it to make that decision? Was it hard at all to say, you know, I could be a Division One athlete? Granted, as Giorgio said, not on ESPN, or I could go to a place that has a little lower profile. Um, actually, which decided was sealed the deal for me was when I came to visit. Um, it kind of felt like I was at home. I had a lot of fun with the team and the parties. So you know, and um, everyone just kind of took me under their wing and. Uh, made it very comfortable for me. So it was it was pretty much easy decision. And it kind of felt good in your senior year already knowing which college you're going to right. instead of scrambling around waiting until last minute. Right. Right. Hike, I don't know if you know this. You, you, you probably do. But in prepping for this interview, I found you have a whole website or at least a, uh, a message board of a website on Lebanese basketball devoted to you. Huh. And I, a bunch of people making comments on where you should go to college. This is obviously oh, a few wait, years back ago. In the day, yeah. <laughs> so oh. before playing at Franklin and Marshall, you played on the under-18 team, I believe, for Lebanon. Is that correct? Yes. Tell us about that experience. It was a great experience. Uh, we got to qualify to go to World Championship, and we all the teams are, are pretty good. We played China, Iran, Dev. One of our one of my teammates right now is playing for Rice. Okay. And it, it's a it's a great exposure to like pro basketball in Lebanon. Right. And my dad is a head coach also oh, okay. in Lebanon. And everything's just, it's just great basketball. And it's a very high level. And everyone in Lebanon loves basketball. It's like the national sport and follows it. And right. everyone has an opinion about it. Right. So Now, you know, I hear from time to time, you know, they compare like the NBA and the Euro League. And they say, oh, the European game is so much different. Is that true at that level? You know, obviously that's not pro, but is, it, is there American international difference there too? Uh, yeah, it kind of is. Uh... We don't, they only get two, there are a lot of two foreigners per team in the okay. Lebanese Pro League, and most of them are ex-NBA players or like okay. NCAA athletes that don't make it to the NBA. Okay. And But the level, it's still a very high level, and it's very high competition, and it's really good basketball. Did you play against anybody in your international competition that, you know, you would see on ESPN or the NBA at this point? Um, I, I didn't go to the World Championship where Lebanon played – guys like Ricky Rubio and okay. all the pros right now because I would decided to stay here. Sure. And there was the AAU Nationals in Florida. Right. And that's why it, I thought I would get better college exposure. So I didn't really play anyone that you would see on TV right now. Now we have, in a sense, with Giorgio and, and Hike here, we actually have two point guards in one way. Hike, you were a point guard, I understand, on the under-18 league and then under-18 league and then sort of grew up into a center. Is that right? Yeah, I was point guard till I was 16 years old, and then I moved to the two spot, and then I came to America, and they put me on the big guy spot, kind of. But um, <laughs> break down his game for me, George. Oh, I see you laughing. What what type of point guard would he be? No, I mean, um, he's a very good passer. 
Um, handling wise, uh, well, he can shoot. It's just surprising <laughs> to hear that you know he's a point guard until sixteen. You know, right. it's, it's not that far away. I mean, long ago. Right. Well, Giorgio, as a freshman, I believe you were on the team that went to the Final Four. You won all kinds of national awards, and you came in. And normally, you know, the the the, the story is you come in, you work hard, and by your junior and senior year, you're having a lot of success. Not for you. You had it right away, both in a team and as an individual. Was it hard to adjust at all to the college game for you, or not really? Not really. Um, playing AAU and um, and at my high school, you know, a lot of my friends play at like West Virginia, Providence, you know, Pittsburgh. So I'm I'm used to playing at the high level. The major difference to me was the court and um, the time limit. You know, it's a right. It's a huge adjustment. You know, I was very tired when I first got here, and um, after that, I kind of it was just easy for me. Was there, was there anything after your freshman year that you particularly wanted to look, work on? Or if, oh, yeah. If uh, I looked at your game from freshman year to senior year, what would I notice? Uh, the my shooting difference? my shooting is a huge difference. <laughs> huge difference. Um, you know, in high school, I didn't – I think I hit a f- less than five threes my whole high – in high school. <laughs> I mean, I shot a lot in AU, but in high school, I really didn't shoot any threes that much. And um, I think gradually during college, I've – worked on my um, jump shot. I mean, it still needs work, but it's a lot better than what it was. Now, I uh, I actually, um, during the summer, my, my full-time job, we had an intern in our office, Ty Sebastio, who I think is, oh. is on your team. <laughs> yeah. And we were talking uh, the one day, and he said, um, he said to me, Gordon, you got to go see Hike and see how he's developed from from freshman to, to now. So, Giorgio, you've seen him all along those times. Break it down for us. How? What do you see? What's different in his game from when he came in? He's a lot more aggressive, and um, it's usually those shots that he was missing his freshman and um, sophomore year is now starting to drop. You know, he still has those weird moves that you can't believe went in, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's just a part of his game. And um, I think the the more comfortable he becomes, the easier it'll be for him to score. Because you know, when we play pickup. We all do unbelievable things, you know, because that's because Coach Robinson is not there. there. (laughs) So, I mean, as soon as we become comfortable, I think we'll be even a better team. Did Hike was when James McNally went down last year to injury, Mm. did that, you know, in a weird sort of way, help you develop as a player? I mean, kind of because it gave me much more experience leading up to this year. Like, I was starting the last bunch of games last year, and that, I guess, helped me realize at what what level I need to be this year and I worked on myself on the off season and I'm having a pretty good year so far and I hope I can do better to continue on but James and Mike they were really good together right and they kind of like t- taught me a lot I right. would learn like especially like their high low passes and what you can do within the system and they really helped me and I'm proud of those guys I miss them Giorgio, you mentioned that you guys try some things in the pickup games that you wouldn't dare try on the court because of Coach Robinson. Over 800 wins, you know, one of the best college coaches at any level ever. So here's the loaded question: What's it like to play for him? Um, it's it's a it's it's a lot of fun. I mean it's it's fun and I mean it has everything <laughs> you has hesitate its, to say every, that. everything <laughs> everything has its ups and downs. You know, no. um, he expects a lot and. Um, I feel like as long as you go out there and play how you know how to play, then um, you'll be fine. I mean, obviously, everyone that's on the team is there for a reason. So, you know, a lot of kids get caught up in not wanting to make mistakes or, you know, even when we're up 20s yelling about defense. But, you know, if you go out there and just play how you know how to play and play hard every time, it's a lot of fun. It's, like, very systematic pretty much. And, <clears throat> he like, his goal for guys off the bench is to come in and not to do s- – and. He doesn't want them to do something spectacular. Right. He just wants them not to mess up the first couple of plays or whatever, just to get their confidence up and start off with like a couple minutes, five minutes, and then <laughs> it keeps just adding up. Like my freshman year, I would go in, try to score, try to do something in the first couple of games, and it didn't work out really well. But then I would just go in toward the end, later part, mid part of the season, just trying to rebound, not mess up, not let my guy score, and that just consistently get added up to my minutes and – Everything's good like that. You know, this is a quality conference, and you guys are far and away the best team. And in, in prior years, uh, Giorgio, I think it's when you were a freshman. Gettysburg was really good and was in the tournament. Or Sinus has been good in spots. Muhlenberg has been good in spots. But it's hard for me, a little bit as an outsider, to look at it. 
I've got Franklin and Marshall, and I've got everybody else. <laughs> who is who in your? I'm not going to put you on the spot and say who's the next right. best team. Who are the next two or three that you know are do separate themselves in your mind from the pack? Um, I mean, everyone, any given night, anyone could win. You know, it's conference play. Um, I just feel. I mean, when you say that question, Washington just pops in my head because that's okay. who we lost to. You know, and I feel like we all won. And um, but every team that comes in here, I feel like. You know, if you watch them on film, they might not look as good, but I feel like when they play F and M, everyone has their best game. So right. I feel like they have nothing to lose. They're coming with a mindset yeah. that they're just gonna play as hard as they can, and it'll look so much, but so good on their record just to right. get yeah. a win against us. So you never know what's gonna happen. If you look at the standings, I'm pretty sure their all of their uh, wins and losses are kind of right around. Them. Right. Yep. So it's it's just who has that good night that night and. Um, luckily, we've been coming out on top. You guys could smile about the next one because you won there this year. Why is it so hard to play at McDaniel? Oh, I can't. <laughs> I hate the gym. <laughs> Coach's um, son went there. The, it's, <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, okay. the gym is just its just awkward. Um, okay. it, it's raised off the floor a little bit. Um, the rooms are a little hard. And, you know, you know you're not going to get the calls away, but at McDaniel, it's just... It's, if some at times it feels like eight on five, but you know, it's it's I'm happy we won there this year. That's what right. I, that's what and, I can say. And you won't have to play. Yeah. You won't have to play yeah. there ever again. Exactly. And you walk through like a very cold stairway, <laughs> yeah, like in the gym. way back of the gym, and it's like it's <laughs> so far from the locker room to get to the gym, and it's just weird. Maybe that's not accidental. <laughs> 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 One more question, kind of outside of your your realm. Last year, you guys played Virginia Wesley in right. the tournament at their place. I've been there before, uh, so I know it's a tough place to play. And they started the year number one, and they're in the top five at some some place this year. What did you think of them? What made them so good? Because they pretty much brought back everybody. Um, I love their gym, so I wouldn't mind. I mean, I would love to play here, but I mean, the rooms are nice. The crowd, I love the crowd. I love yep. that when there's people crazy. yelling at you and stuff like that. But um, they were pretty young and very athletic, so um. And they had a couple really good shooters, too. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I'm not surprised that they're ranked so high. and um, But they, they were a pretty good team, you know. Um, they they had great guys at every spot. You know, usually when you go through the route, you can slack off of this guy yeah. and help out. But, you yeah. know, they were pretty solid. And um, we all won, too. <laughs> Hopefully we get a, get a chance to play. <laughs> Hike, do you have a favorite gym other than this one here at Franklin and Marshall in the conference to play at? Haverford. Okay. It seems like every time I've had my best games at Haverford somehow. I don't know why, but. Well, you, it, we're recording this just after your game against Haverford yeah, here in Franklin it, Marshall. One. <laughs> 71 to 51, I think, was the uh, uh, was the final for you guys. All right, last one, and I'll, I'll give it to you, Giorgio. You've been to the final four. What will it take for this team to get back? Um, We cannot take plays days off from practice um you know we're, we're so used to winning like as you can see the conference we've, we've won not saying that the conference is bad but freshman year we've lost a, right more than four times yeah. or three or four times in the conference you know i think that helped us a lot to when we were ready to play after the conference you know so i think the team is just getting so used to having to give in to them and um i think when we play in the ncaa's you know it's everyone's there won their conference just like us so I think, I still think our first game is going to be a little shock to certain players, but right. luckily we have me guys like me, Hike, um, right. Brandon, um, Max, that's been there, and you know, hopefully we can hold it together when we get that first shock of comp. I mean, NCAA play. So, right. and it'd um, be nice to play it here. Yeah, right. <laughs> like freshman year. So I'm hoping, hopefully we could come out on top of our region and host. Well, we'll be following uh, you, Giorgio, and Hike, and the rest of the diplomats, the diplomats the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.